Shalom, shalom. Dear ones, I have a very special message I want to bring you today. <clears throat> and uh, for me, the biggest heartburn is how many people have not yet understood that we all deserve hell. But the only way not to go to hell is by accepting Jesus Christ. First, receiving him, then you come, become a child of God from a creature of God. You become a child of God. <clears throat> but then, how to walk in your life under the protection of the greatest, greatest sacrifice that our God gave for us, and that's his son on the cross. And I want to read that now to you. Uh, Romans 3.25, it says, <clears throat> I started a little earlier, uh, 24, but by the free gift of God's grace, all are put right with him through Christ Jesus, who sets them free. God offered him, him, Jesus, so that by his blood, he should become the means by which people's sin are forgiven through their faith in him. God did this in order to demonstrate that he is righteous. In the past, he was patient and overlooked people's sins. But in the present time, he deals with their sins in order to demonstrate his righteousness. In this way, God shows that he himself is righteous and that he puts right everyone who believes in Jesus. So, <clears throat> you know, to receive Christ is the number one uh, thing that you need to do. You need to know you are a creature of God. You are a temple of the Holy Spirit. You, you are not just, just by, uh, flesh and bones. You are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And, uh, Wait a minute, I think, yeah, I need to read that to you now. That's in 1 Corinthians 3, 16 to 17. It says, surely you know that you are God's temper and that God's spirit lives in you. God will destroy anyone who destroys God's temper, for God's temper is holy and you yourselves are his temper. A physical temple is a place where we worship God, honor God and serve God. A temple is a holy place where you can't take filthy items too. Everyone who enters the temple is expected to dress appropriately and, and uh, uh, com comfort themselves in a manner, in a manner that brings reverence to God, behave like a godly person. So in the same way that you revere rever 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 the temple and keep it holy, you must respect and keep your body holy because the Bible says that your body is God's temple and the Spirit of God lives in you. If you cannot bring filth in the house of God, then you must not use your body, which is the temple of God for evil purposes or filthy acts such as envy and immorality and bitterness and revenge, unforgiveness, drunkenness, telling lies or stealing. Instead, you must honor God with your body by living a godly life, serving people through giving, being honest in all your ways and treating people the way you want them to treat you. Since you were made in God's image, keep your body free from all sinful and lustful pleasures, because not only are you holy, but the Spirit of God himself dwells in you. And dear ones, I have uh, uh, made a study about the blood of Jesus and it really, really touched my heart deeply. The anointing, the power and the security we can have because of the shed blood of Jesus. Uh, let me just tell you now here quite a few scriptures. What all the blood of Jesus, uh, what the effects are in our lives. The blood of Jesus protects us. In the Exodus 12, 13, the blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you, 
when I strike Egypt. And it was a few weeks ago, already a few months, that God spoke to me, what was the security of the Egyptians, uh, of, the, of the Israelis in Egypt, when the spirit of death came by. They had to put, with the, with the blood of the lamb, the sacrificed lamb, they had to put it on this doorpost and on this doorpost, which is a cross. And wherever that blood was on these two doorposts, the, devil, the, the uh, angel of death had to pass by. And so I said, Lord, how can I do that now? And he said, put on every door, and we are still in the process of doing it. We have done it already with many places. We put a cross. And I have already done in many places, when we have the Lord's Supper, I take some of the wine and make the cross. I, I put it on the cross. And we can say we have no diseases. We, we really experience peace in our houses. So the blood of Jesus protects us. It sets us free. In Exodus 12, 27, then tell them it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord who passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt and spared our homes when he struck down the Egyptians. And this was a revelation to me, and I will not stop. I have already, I think, about 200 more crosses that we will place on the doors, the outside doors of houses. And when we have the Lord's Supper, we put the blood there. In uh, Exodus, no, the blood of Jesus saves. In Hebrew 9.28, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many, and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Then the blood of Jesus justifies in Romans 5, 9. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through it? And about the same scripture in Romans 3, 24 to 25. And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. The blood Jesus forgives us. In Ephesians 1, 7. In him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. The blood of Jesus heals. 1 Peter 2.24 He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Then the blood of Jesus gives life. In John 6.53 Jesus said to them, very truly tell you, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. And when Jesus said that, many people left him because they couldn't imagine to eat his flesh and drink his blood. But he gave us the Lord's Supper. And you know, the Lord's Supper is not a memory. It is when we by faith receive the bread and the the wine we receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ. In John 6:53, Jesus said to them, "Very, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you." Amen. And then the blood of Jesus cleanses. First John 1:7. But if we walk in the light. As he's in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Then the blood of Jesus gives us power to overcome the enemy. In Revelations 12, 11, they triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of the, their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. I need to tell you a story there. 
you know, we also had house church for quite a while. <clears throat> and uh, I have, when all children are at home, many are in, dorm, in, in uh, boarding schools, I, I told them the scripture. I said, we had house church, and then I said, Roman, in Revelation 12, 11, it says, they triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. I said, children, what could that mean? And they all said, almost in one accord, Mama, that means that we may have to die as martyrs. And I said, yes, children, that could be that. But you know, what would be the worst that could happen to me? If they would torture you in front of me so that I would renounce Jesus Christ, that would be terrible for me. And the children all said, Mama, you need to remain strong. The more they torture us, the faster we are with Jesus. I never imagined you could hear such a message in the Western world, but this is Africa. And then I said, and, and then uh, one of the boys said, but mama, we are not going to get weak when they torture you. And that was then for me clear that it was real. Amen. They also knew for Christ we are willing to give it all. <clears throat> then the blood of Jesus redeems us from the curse of the law. Galatians 3.13. And by the way, they are all in the New International Version these scriptures. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a, on a pole, on a cross. Then the blood of Jesus shields us from the enemy's accusations. In Ephesians 1, 7, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of, his, of God's glory of God's grace, sorry. I read it again, Ephesians 1, 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Then the blood of Jesus disarms powers and authorities. Colossians 2, 15. And having disarmed at the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. The blood of Jesus exposes and triumphs over the enemy. In Colossians 2.15, And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Then the blood of Jesus justifies us. 2 Corinthians 5.21, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The blood of Jesus draws us near to God, but now in Christ Jesus, who uh, you, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. And the blood of Jesus makes us kings and priests. In Revelations 1, 5 to 6, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, in him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us by, to be king, a kingdom of priests, uh, a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. The blood of Jesus frees us from guilt and condemnation in Romans 8, 1 to 2. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set us free from the law of sin and death through the blood, the shed blood. Then the blood of Jesus grants us access to the holy place. In Hebrew 10, 19 to 22. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most high, 
the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through this curtain, that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings. Yeah, through the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus alone redeems us, not gold and silver. 1 Peter 1, 18 to 19. For you know that it was not by perishable things, such as silver and gold, you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Jesus, a lamb without blemish and defect. And the last scripture here, the blood of Jesus cleanses our conscience. In Hebrews 9.14, how much more then will the blood of Jesus you who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our conscience from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. Beloved, treasure the blood of Jesus. <coughs> Put yourself and your family daily under the protection of the blood of Jesus. The enemy has to respect that sacrifice. I do it every day. And I'm very thankful that I can experience just protection, unbelievable, and, and peace and joy. And I feel like I'm almost in another dimension looking down on this world because I am hidden with Christ. I pray that you will have a revelation of how precious the blood of Jesus is for us. Without the shed blood, we all would have no hope, no hope. I pray that you, you internalize and read the scriptures in different versions and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Much love, much love to you. God is calling you to be his prince or princess, totally cleansed and purified and set aside through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Shalom and Amen.